Drones have to be registered coming soon. The Diffie-Hellman protocol for crypto is probably NSA's favorite thing ever. Secure all the things with Facebook and China is hacking the US. Are we surprised? All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I'm Shannon Morse, and this is ThreatWire for October 21st, 2015. And by the way, happy Back to the Future Day. This is your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Just a quick reminder that we are funded by the contributions of our viewers via Patreon over at patreon.com slash threatwire for that. On to the news. So first off, drones, helicopters, quadrocopters, what's going on? So earlier this week, the US Department of Transportation held a press conference to discuss the coming registration registration requirements for the use of small drones and unmanned aircraft systems, or UAS. This would be used in case of any kind of incidents involving drones so that an owner can be contacted and accounted for. Drone owners would be informed of regulations for flying as well. While no regulations and rules are completely developed, the DOT wants them done by November 20th and is working with the FAA along with drone and airline industries to come up with a standard for regulations and registration. Some smaller drones that have a low safety safety risk, probably like the little Hubson quad, won't require registration. Some larger quadcopters will. Now while we are currently unsure which models will correspond with registration, we expect to hear about those by the end of the year. In similar news, a website called The Intercept published several documents pertaining to drone-related killings by the American government, many of which did not kill the intended target of a strike. The documents, which were leaked by a whistleblower, explain how these drone strikes are implemented and it's a little bit unsettling. Save a good afternoon to read the entire document list, but it's definitely worth it. We'll have a link to the entire thing down in the show notes below. Diffie-Hellman, or DH for short, is a cryptographic protocol used for exchanging keys online as security for a communication, and it was later followed by RSA for public key crypto using asymmetric al algorithms. Now, if all of that sounds a little confusing, watch the Hack5 link below. A group of researchers have released a presentation explaining how DH fails in practice due to the fact that about two-thirds of VPNs, a quarter of SSH servers globally use one single common 1024-bit prime number for the encryption. And with NSA's $11 billion per year budget, they could easily crack many communications if they were just able to break one prime. And since DH only commonly uses a few primes, this would be well within their reach. The researchers write, quote, this state of affairs puts everyone's security at risk. Vulnerability on this scale is indiscriminate. It impacts everybody's security including American citizens and companies, but we hope that a clearer technical understanding of the cryptanalytic machinery behind government surveillance will be an important step towards better security for everyone. They recommend websites use 2048-bit Diffie-Hellman keys and for SSH users to upgrade to the latest open SSH. Facebook posted an update on their blog this week announcing that they will alert you if they believe your profile is being targeted or is compromised by a state-sponsored actor, and will ask if you'd like to turn on login approvals. A state-sponsored attack could very well be positioned against a political opponent, protesters, journalists, or a person speaking out of line about a government, just to name a few. Facebook does not explain how they know if an attack is coming from a state sponsor, but they plan to only use this notification for those specifically. They do explain that a notification like this could also be due to a compromised machine, such as one with malware. Whether you think you could be a target of any attack on your social network accounts, I highly suggest that you use two-factor authentication and do turn on login approvals. Back on the 25th of September, an announcement was made that both the US and China would not conduct any kind of espionage or commercial hacks on targets in the alternate country. Afterwards, in a report by security firm CrowdStrike, it appears that China-based hackers had continued to attack technology in pharmaceutical companies in the U.S., which could be to steal intellectual property or trade secrets. While it is completely possible that there could be a time delay between the acknowledgement of the agreement and actual implementation, they do believe that these attacks were due to the same group that was involved with the OPM breach, also believed to be by a Chinese attacker. This information was posted publicly by CrowdStrike with a high degree of confidence that these intrusions were undertaken by a variety of different Chinese actors. However, this information has not been confirmed. 
So take it with a grain of salt. Thanks again to all of our patrons at patreon.com slash threatwire. You are the ones that make the show possible, independent, and completely ad-free. The fur baby pictures that you send in are incredibly cute and awesome. And if you have any new ones, please send them over our way. If you want to be a backer and have your name on the website over at threatwire.net, check out patreon.com slash threatwire. And with that, I'm Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet. And yes, I said quadricopter. Thank <laughs> you.